Shalom. Uh, today's a great day. Today is Monday, the 16th of March uh, in the year of 2020 of her Lord. And I have three things that I want to share with you uh, that was uh, just I woke up with and um, it was kind of inspirational. So these are my three points. Um, first of all, the first one is that the minds of the people um, with uh, in light of what's going on, the minds of the people are being played with. I want you to kind of sit back and think about that um, with what's going on in the media and what's happening just in our world and our culture. Uh, the third point I want to, to also want you to consider is to think back over all of our humanity, like the, just the history of humanity and with God. Um, think back over those years. And then uh, the third point is to trust in his way. Um, meditate on his messages, um, his messages to you. So I'm going to be very brief and um, and just break down what I mean by those things because this was in my spirit um, from last night as I was just chatting with um, my fellow grocer uh, just around the corner and uh, you know we were just conversing about all the stuff that he was saying and he calls himself you know a, a cat from the street and but he's full of wisdom um, I didn't get permission to announce his name so I'm not gonna put it out there but um, he is just he's full of wisdom and he was just sharing with some of the things that he was seeing in the grocery like how he had to break up fights um, and he saw parents spraying their kids with Lysol um, just he says it's not even worth it and he brought up a suggestion that I thought was very interesting he said if you told people to stop shopping um, if you just told people to stop buying don't consume anything we'll see it'll be interesting to see how quickly this virus or this this frenzy would pass so um that gave me something to think about like if this is more of a consumer thing because businesses are open fast food places are open and all the places that are of nonprofit are closed and um and so the people are left to do what be with each other and consume um so as as a media maker myself, I I know like I, I I'm very familiar with messaging and what is the message and getting your message out. So I I I don't see the news as the same. I'm always looking at it from that standpoint, um, the standpoint of my profession, and um, just 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 know this like in the spirit that you know we're spirit soul body beings. So we're spirit, soul, body beings. Um, we're a triune being who's made in the image of God and in the likeness of God. And so everything happens in the spirit first before it's moved to the soul and then to the body manifested in the body. Um, so the mind, be aware of this. You know, the minds of the people are being played with. Um, that is, that's what I see um, as a herolder, um, as a scribe, um, a journalist for Jesus. That's what I see is that the minds of the people are being played with um, here in the globe and at, at, at the very least, at the very most in North America um, and how people are responding. Uh, this, uh, let's see. Um, what did what, what I have in the, I can't, my own handwriting. I, I had a note here. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So I also wanted to point out like, I know that some people are using this to, um, I guess, advocate for politics and and, and voting and, and making this a race thing, making it a political thing, a gender thing. And it's none of those things. It's none of those things. So um, man, ah, man who's created by God cannot satisfy me or cannot satisfy other men in the way that God can and his word can. So um, really think about what's being said and then commit that to the Lord, give it back to the Lord, you know, um, commit it to him in your your one-on-one -on -one time and your, your, your communication with him. Um, so that is, that's one of the things that I said. And then if you just think about over humanity, like just over the, over the history of humanity and our relationship with God, and um, just the things that we've come through and we've dealt with. Um, I mean, there's SARS, there was malaria, there's, these things still exist. Um, 
the bird flu, Ebola. <laughs> We're just talking about that. <laughs> so um, uh, the West Nile virus, I just all these viruses and sicknesses and these diseases that has happened and come upon um, the globe itself. Um, and then how we all survive that. And just think about in your own life, how you survive certain things um, and how God has carried you and kept you. Um, his times, our times are in his hands and he's our protector. He's our provider. I love being his child. I just love being his daughter. I am a daughter of the most high God. And that is who my trust is in daily 24 seven, whatever he allows, he allows. And, um, and he's given us all a piece of himself and a part of himself. Uh, and, and we thank you for the solutions that are coming um, and that are here um, to help uh, solve this virus. Because <laughs> he's the ultimate solution to all of that. So don't let your mind just go into fear and don't bow to the spirit of fear. Um, instead, um, choose God first in every action and every choose his ways first in every action in every way of being um, and the way that you can do that is to is to really trust in the way trust in his way and one of the ways that I found is his word I love it we're going to read in it I'm going to share some of the things with you but um, is to trust his word and what he says, and then apply his word. Like it really works. You know, if you apply this word that he left for us and he's still giving to us, he's still speaking today um, through through many. Um, I, I think that you, we, are the mind, the mind, the mind, the mind, the mind, our soul, our soul center um, will, will be better for it. So let's see, if we trust in the way, uh, meditate on his message to you and the way that we do that is through his word this is the way this is the way to go which is Christ Christ said um, well Christ the words that he just says and if you just read the word of God even if you chose like a two or three scriptures a day I'm going to read Daniel I been I was in Ezekiel 33 today and Luke um, was it Ezekiel 33 and Luke 9 and 8 and then Ezekiel 34 it's actually a fun read um, but just the words, because they're living and they're powerful words. Um, uh, they're living and powerful words that, that really do make a difference in the everyday life. So trust in the way and the way is through Christ. Meditate on the messages of Christ. If you just read the red, red in the Gospels, um, you'll see the correlation between the Old Testament, New Testament, even the Torah. And... And so I, I just, I, I'm like, wow, this is really good. So try, meditate on his messages and trust in his way and let this mind, it, trusting in his way is letting the spirit of Christ, spirit of God lead you. Um, and you get that through the word um, and, and repenting and bowing down, you know, and just really yielding your way to the way of God's word. And, um, it's powerful. It really is powerful. Uh, I love the scripture. I think it was Paul that said, let the mind of Christ also be in you, in me. Like the way Christ would think, the way Christ would do things, let that mindset reside in you. Um, and when you think about how Christ lived here on earth, Jesus, who is the Christ, um, he, he was phenomenal. Even though he was God with us, Emmanuel, just the the wisdom of God that that abided with him, the communion with God that 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 was there, um, the consciousness of God's spirit that resided every day with him, and the way he responded, I was just like, wow, that is that's phenomenal. So every day, you know, that is my prayer is that that mind would reside with me and be in me, and that I would meditate on his messages. Because if you don't, if you if you med, if you're meditating on other messages that aren't profitable or beneficial to your spiritual growth, um, you you wouldn't fare very well. So my faring, I fare actually, I'm I'm doing exceptionally well because I I love this life that I live because of the mind of Christ, and I get that mind through reading His Red in the Gospel and reading the Word. So just. 
you know, those simple things help. Um, just they're for your consideration. And um, I want to read Daniel 3 because, and just commentate on that as I read it. It is so good. And um, you could, you don't even have to pay attention. Like if you just, if you just listen to the word, let it just meditate on this. I'm going to read it in your hearing. Gen and Daniel chapter three reads, Nebuchadnezzar, the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Babylon has a history with Israel. They took them into captivity at some point for, I think, over like 400 years. They were very sneaky, sneaky. Um, and how they took the North Israel people and then they also took the Southern um, lands of Israel and took them all into captivity. It's pretty sad though. But nonetheless, that's okay. God delivered them out of it. But this is what Nebuchadnezzar said. Then Nebuchadnezzar, verse two, the king sent to gather together the, the princes and the governors and the captains and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors, the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king set up. This sounds very interesting because, I mean, this is like, sounds like in the day of age that we're living in. This is, this is law. Our government at work today. This is kind of resembles them. Um, so, and the king did that. And so then in verse three, we read, then the princes, the governors, and the captains, and the judges, and the treasurers, um, the money people, I mean, we could easily say that's the tax people, the IRS, the law, um, the counselors, that would be like our council members, the sheriffs, our policemen, and all the rulers of the provinces, our executives of our counties, like all those people, it just sounds like I'm seeing this today, were gathered together in the dedication of the image of Nebuchadnezzar. Interesting. The king had set up, hmm, and they stood before the image of Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So all the government officials, everybody that was making law and rules, they all came together in one place to see this image that the king had set up. Then a herald cried aloud. A herald is somebody who would have been me, like a public affairs person, a media person, um, what we call that a scribe today. So a herald, um, that would be me in that case. Um, then a herald cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages. So all people around the globe, okay, so all nationalities, all this, this is what he cried out. Um, he gave this word of the king. The king didn't say it, but this is what the public information officer would have said or their um, public affairs person or their public relations person, their publicist, their media person, whatever it was. Okay, that person had said, um, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, all these things, wow. Um, the dulcimer, I don't know what that is, but it's when you hear it and all kinds of music, kind of reminds me when I was in the military and how we would hear um, the national anthem playing, we would have to stop and what we would do. So let's see. So when you hear all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image. We didn't have to do that in the Air Force. We just had to stand at attention um, with the end of the day, right? So, and salute the flag. So um, let's see, all kinds. Of, so when you hear this music, fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Fall down and worship the golden image that the king had set up, this man had set up, right? Do what he says. And whoso falleth not down and worships shall the same hour cast into the mist a burning, fiery furnace. Ooh, wow. What a threat. Therefore, at the time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, and the sackbut, the psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshiped the golden image of Nebuchadnezzar, the king had set up, this man. They worshiped this thing that this man had made. Wherefore, at the time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews, they spake 
and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, "O oh, king, live forever." They worshiped this man. They giving they were giving him all of this oh praise, worship, link forever. Thou, O oh, king, has made a decree that every man that should, these are tattletellers actually that are coming to him shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, sackbuck, psaltery, and dulcimer. I guess that's I have to I should go to Sunday school so I learn how to pronounce that. And all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worship and worshipeth that he shall cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. So these are the people who are watching and spying on the children, who are watching and spying on the Jewish children. Um, the people that belong to God. They're watching and spying on the people that belong to God, right? And so they're tattletelling. And whoso falleth not downwards, this is what you said, right? So we go to verse 12. There are certain Jews, there are certain Jews. So some Jews were bowing. Some of the chosen children were bowing to what the king had said to them. They were bowing to this other God. But there were some Jews who did not. And these Jews' names, okay, so there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over affairs of the providence of Babylon. That was common, that they would use the people that they took into captivity um, to actually handle the affairs like they would stay in territory. They would appoint them in places. So they would give them like a bone and still be in charge of things and made them like in charge, you know, you know, those folk. So anyways, um... And uh, you see, set over after, so there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shad, they are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They were in a position. They were in a position of authority, and they did not do what the man, the king, told them to do. He was asking them to, they should have been, they should have been, oh my God, let us obey the law of the land. We must not obey the law. We have to obey those that have ruler over you. They, they were not doing that. They were not doing the obedience of those that have ruler over them. And these people are telling on these men who are in position. O king have not regarded thee. They're reminding him of the king of what he said. They serve not thy gods they don't serve your gods the thing that you made um nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up oh my god they're not doing what you told them to do and why is that and so king ne then nebuchadnezzar in verse 13 in his rage and fury he commanded to bring shadrach meshach and abednego they brought these men before the king mm, you bad men you're my governors. I put you over this land and I made you, I made you who you are. You bad men, you three men. Why aren't you bowing to me, bowing to what I've done? Uh, why aren't you worshiping what I said and decreed is what they said. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is it true? Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? What? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, sackbot, sultry, and uh, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made? Well... But if you worship not, you shall be cast into the same hour. You shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Like, you're not worshiping my gods. So which God is going to deliver? I mean, you know you're going to lose your life, right? If you don't worship my gods. This is a command, a decree that I've made. So if you don't do what I told you to do, you know that you're going to be burnt up. But there is a scripture that says, um, in the fire, to live is Christ. <laughs> well, actually, it's a song. But the scripture says to live is Christ and to die is gain. But there's a song that in the fire, I think it's by Sidewalk Prophets. I think that's kind of what I am, like a sidewalk prophet. But anyways, nonetheless, um, in Christ, so in Christ, we're in the fire. He's the darkest night and he's the brightest sun. So whenever we're going through trials, whatever it is, it's beautiful to know that in Christ is to live and to die is gain. Like 
whichever way we go, whether he takes us out of here or we're here on earth occupying till he comes, it is always going to be to our benefit. Whatever it is, it's for our good. So if I'm dying today, praise God. If he's taking me out today, praise God. That's the trust I have in him. I'm not fearful of man, what they can do to me. I fear the one who can destroy both my soul and my body. Baleka, ba, bua. See, so now this is what he's saying. He's like, who, whose God is going to deliver you? Because you're not worshiping my God. I'm going to put you in the fiery furnace. This is man-made, right? I'm like, I love these boys. I love these men. They're actually young men. They kind of remind me of these young men that are part of this BAM ministry here in the region, Born Again Ministries. I love their faith. I love their faith in God. And they don't care. They don't care. They just, they're about God first. They're make, they literally are living Matthew 6.33 every day. Go find out if you don't know. So, and, and he said, he asked and says, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? And it says, 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner, in this matter. And they were being respectful. You know, it was like, we're, we're very careful to, and you know, we're respecting you and your position, excuse me, of authority. I was like, so, and I, yesterday I was like, so with all due respect, sir, this is what they're saying. But if it be so, our God, whom we serve, that's the one that we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be known unto thee, O king, that, mm, but if not, I love that because it's like, we don't know the ways of the Lord. Whatever he allows, he allows, he's allowing it for our good. So he says, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not still serve thy gods, um, nor worship the golden image which thou set set up. This is their faith and their trust in God. I love it. You know, because it was like, it's this is man's way of doing business on earth. But they're like, nope, we're not doing man's way of business on earth. We're going to do God's way of business on earth, which is his kingdom. We're going to do God's way of doing business on earth. And so I love how they responded. They weren't fear. They didn't care that they had a nonprofit organization. They didn't care that they got grants or money or they were in a position. They still kept God first. They remembered who their God was. I love that about them. Then, Nebuch then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury in their response. Like, oh my God, the audacity of these men. Um, and the form of his visage ooh, was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, 